Good evening, good evening, traders. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hello, Perry. Good to see you, sir. We're going to give it just the customary minute or two. So let the stragglers in. <clears throat> Uh, new face here, at least relatively new. Welcome, Paul. Maybe you've been in a couple of times, but hello to you. Hi, Bob. Good to see you. I get excited, you guys, when we're talking about options. I'm not going to lie. I get going. I get enthusiastic. Part two today should be good. Trying to respond to feedback. And so what I want to do today, we're gonna we're gonna like actually just kind of go through and build a couple of trades step by step. What do we need to know? Um, I was gonna go into more, you know, kind of option theory and definitions, and we can do that next month when we get into uh, the options foundations course that is gonna start in December, first Tuesday in December. Um, but today we're gonna. We're going to kind of wrap this up and hopefully give you a, a good starting point. All right. Okay. I think we gave everybody what they needed. Let me get a quick drink and we're going to dive in. Formally and officially welcome out to the Market Watch group. Trading Foundations course. We're getting close uh, to the end. We've got today. Next, uh, next week, we're only meeting Tuesday. And on Tuesday, the topic is post-trade assessment. That one is going to be awesome, right? The post-trade assessment is when we talk about how do I take all of my past trades once I get to the fact that they're past and learn from them, right? We, we're working very hard, very hard to standardize every aspect of our process, every bit of what we do. Every rule, every routine, every step standardized so that then we can go back and say, what can be improved? What step? Right now we're going to go through, right? So we even isolate. We're going to talk about, if you don't remember, the stages of a trade. Hi, Suzanne. Good to see you. The stages of a trade, four stages. Each stage, there's different considerations, different responsibilities, different thought processes, we're going to talk a little bit about that. That might make you decide to go into the content library, dig up that old stages of a trade video, watch that and, and refresh yourself on that. So today, intro to options, part two. If you missed last week, we laid, or not last week, if you missed last session, which was on Tuesday, we, we tried to lay the groundwork, some definitions, some understandings of perspectives. We are beginning our perspective as buyers because that is the building blocks to being a options trader. You are a buyer. As a buyer, you have rights, yada, yada. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Here's our agenda. No, here's our disclaimers. Be careful. We're not advisors. Always, always these can be found in your emails. Um, have you signed up for Discord? If not, do it. You have an email there. We met today. Well, we had some people there. We had some good interactions. I want more. I want us to get in there and talk about it. Tomorrow, you're on your own. I want everyone to be in there, 7.30. No, that's my time. 9.30 to 10.30 Eastern. Have a pre-market open or a market open. Let's just see what, the, see what there is to talk about. What's good? Today, our agenda, overview of buying options. Then we're going to discuss the specific steps you need to go through to buy a call option. If you're bullish, which we are, we're more we're more bullish than bearish, but we'll talk about puts as well. What are the steps? Then to the platform. We'll go to the platform. I've identified two stocks. I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again. These are not recommendations. These are these are not even necessarily set up, but they are in what I would consider to be a reasonable setup position. So I'm going to. Uh, uh, hypothetically walk through them. If there is a confirmation, you will decide what the confirmation is for you. If you take the trade, you will decide to make it your trade. Um, I just like to reiterate that. 
Um, but we'll do both. We'll do both calls and puts. Hello, Stephen. Glad you could make it. Well, I'm glad to hear we're more important than the other meeting. Um, uh, we appreciate you more than the other meeting appreciates you. I know that. So I think it's a good fit. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will talk about the steps to buying a put and we will go to the platform and we will walk through. I work off of a very specific platform. We'll talk about that. I use Thinkorswim. I've used it for a long time. I think it is the best if, I mean, maybe there's others that could match up now for a very, very, very long time. And I would say even now, still, it is the gold standard. I think for both, well, for three dimensions, and these are dimensions that are very important to me. Number one, the charts. Very good charts, ability to put indicators, zoom in, zoom out, change time frames, et cetera. Number two, the order types. OCOs, first triggers, first trigger OCO, conditional orders, et cetera. Number three, options pricing model. If your broker doesn't have a fairly sophisticated options pricing model, you are missing out on a really important tool that options traders should have. Thinkorswims is great. You'll see me use it. Thinkorswim is now offered through Charles Schwab. So my understanding is at this point, you would absolutely, if you were new, go open a Charles Schwab account. Then you would download uh, Thinkorswim by Charles Schwab. I believe they'll still let you open an account with no balance, give you access to the platform and let you play around with it a little bit where you can do some paper trading. I highly recommend paper trading options if they're new to you, without a doubt. Um, okay, then we'll talk about, you know, thought process as you manage an options trade. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the types of orders that you can use to manage an options trade. And then next steps. <clears throat> Let's dive in, shall we? Overview of buying options. What is our objective? The position, if you are a buyer, you are long the option. You have rights. You have the right, but not the execution or not the obligation to execute the contract, whether it's a call or a put at the specified strike price. You have the right to sell the option. Yes. If you're like, I want to sell it, let's go. Um, I'm out. I would look into Schwab if they have um, um, brokerage. If Schwab operates in Australia, I would think that platform is available. I just... It's whether or not they operate there. That's a great question internationally. Um, so yes, the the um, when you have rights, you have the right to sell it. You have the right. You don't have to wait. You can you can exercise it, but really, I've never willingly exercised an option. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not like, oh, look, it's up. Let's exercise. If it's up and you want to do something, close the contract. If you're done, sell the contract. You have the right to let it expire worthless if you want to, which means it went against you. You did nothing. You lost everything. There are times where I position size willing to lose everything and then it might happen. And it's like, well, okay. I'm, I was willing to see that, right? Where it's a cheap out of the money option, all or nothing. Um, okay. Remember that if you get to expiration date and there is any intrinsic value at all, your broker will automatically exercise it so on Monday, when you come in and open your account, you're going to have a bill for buying the stock or shorting the stock. Um, you're going to have a bill to satisfy that. So don't just let it go. When you get to expiration, know what's going on and know what you're going to do. If I do calls, I'm bullish. <laughs> I expect that the stock is going to rise. If I'm puts, I am bearish. I expect that the stock is going to fall. The right to call somebody out. I've locked in a buy price. The right to put the stock to somebody. I've locked in the sell price. That's what I'm doing. My risk and my investment. It's a limited risk. I cannot lose more than I pay for the option, but I can lose everything I pay for the option in a very short period of time. It might be two weeks, three weeks, a month. Everything I do is going to be upfront. I cannot buy options on margin. I pay cash. You have to have the money in the account, just so you know. Um, expiration and decision. Expiration date. So remember that they uh, um, they will always have a date. We talk about it as, as Friday because they stop trading on Friday. But they don't technically expire until midnight of the following Saturday. 
and that and that distinction if some bad news comes out or it's close or you have to be aware that an assignment could occur where someone calls on Friday and says, I want to assign it or I want to exercise. Um, very important. Can we do anything with it? No. If you were the seller of the option, now that's where the, well, okay. Not at that point, Sandra, great question. Not at that point, not on Saturday. On Friday, if it was really close, well, then there's nothing left. If you can buy it back for 10 cents, that's where a lot of people are, you know, looking to pick up nickels in front of a steamroller. Like, oh, free money. Is it free? <laughs> um, because, it, you know, at the end of that contract, you should be able to buy it back. This is, remember, this is only if you're obligated will you get assigned. If you're obligated, that's as a seller. As a buyer, they can't force you to do anything. Right. So whatever the whatever the closing price is, that's what you're operating on. So um, so at the end of the ex, at the end of the uh, uh, option. It becomes worthless or in this case, as a buyer, it's auto exercise. If it gets auto exercise, that means somebody on the other side of that is getting assigned. A seller is obligated. That person's going to have to deliver in order to satisfy the fact that you auto exercised. Uh, okay, let's go on. Steps to buying a call. What do we need to do if we want to buy a call option? Step one, analyze the stock. You got to have a trade. An option is a derivative. It's a contract. It's a derivative of the stock. Therefore, it is the underlying stock that we are trading. I'm, not, I'm, I'm using the option to trade the stock. That's how we want to think about this. It's the stock that tells, if we're, it tells us if we're right or wrong. It's the stock that I'm going to be thinking about what's my stop loss, what's my target, what's my time frame. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing based on what I see on the stock chart. It's just that I'm taking what I see on the stock chart, you can see step two, and then I'm moving to an option and I'm, I'm gonna analyze the options. I'm gonna use options to, to build a trade around the assumptions and the parameters that I establish when I analyze the stock. What do I need to know? You need to understand the potential characteristics involving price, time, and volatility. PTV, price, time, volatility. Price, what is the stock going to do? I think it's going up. Great, how far? Um, and what if you're wrong? Now I need to know if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Here, where's here? Where's the line in the sand? How much? How much are you letting it drop? Because now I have a risk amount and I have a reward amount. And if I have a risk and I have a reward, I also have a reward to risk ratio. And we're going to go through this. I'm going to use a specific stock and we're going to see what it looks like. Sometimes, sometimes when you analyze the stock, you realize, you know what? I thought there was something here, but the numbers just didn't make sense. Then you never move past analyze the stock. Analyze the stock is stage one. Stage one is due diligence. This is where you're like, hey, do I have a setup? If I have a setup and I get a trigger, where's my stop? Where's my target? What's my time frame? That's price and, and time. Volatility is how are those options priced right now? So when I talk about time, I want to know how long is it likely going to take if I'm right? Seven to 10 days is probably going to be my time frame. I also want to have a little bit of a sense of how long am I going to let it take if I'm wrong, right? Where I say, I'm going to let it go three, maybe four days. If at that point it hasn't started to go right, I'm going to start tightening my stop up and, and really thinking if I want to stay in this trade or not. Um, does that make sense? <clears throat> Please throw questions at me as we go. Um, I know sometimes probably it's easy to find yourself mesmerized by the magic of options. You're like, oh, oh my God, Scott, I had no idea this magical fantasy world of options existed. It does. And we're in it together right now. Um, so yeah, throw, throw your questions. Am I talking straight calls? Yes. Right now, remember, our building blocks dictate that we first understand the perspective of a buyer. We are long calls long calls um as opposed 
to when we start thinking about short or selling calls. Now, short can mean naked if there's nothing else. Short can be a part of a spread or a part of a another strategy, which is like a covered call. But right now, the building blocks dictate that we only are taking the perspective of a buyer. You are a speculator and you are using options to speculate. Why? Remember, leverage is the first thing. Leverage. That's the number one reason, right? Um, we can do more for less, essentially. Um, it's not... Is the risk lower for a seller than a buyer? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, look, you're going to have um, different people give you different statistics. For me, the answer is not necessarily. Um, and the reason I say that is because it depends, uh, um, right? The, the longer you're in a trade, the answer is yes. Uh, the higher the volatility, the answer is yes. Um, however, Am I am I willing to sacrifice sometimes the element of, of time in order to give myself a greater chance for reward? Absolutely, right? 100%. Bob says, the main reason for me is they're cheaper than buying the stock. I, I'm a swing trader. I know I'm trading for seven to 10 days, right? I know that I know that if I were to buy the stock, I would risk a certain amount of dollars, Right, I might risk five hundred dollars, and if I'm right, I should make between a thousand and fifteen hundred. If I do options, it's the same thing. I'm going to risk five hundred. I'm going to, if I'm right, I'm going to expect to make a thousand to fifteen hundred. Although with options, especially in low volatility, there might be times where I risk five hundred to make two thousand, twenty five hundred. All of a sudden, the 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 characteristics of a cheap option can magnify a trade. Right. It can I mean, it's it's it can be quite astounding. Uh, uh, eventually, we'll see some of that. But yeah, here's what I say. Make no assumptions about options. Make no assumptions. There's I could make an argument for just about anything at a certain point or another. Um, let's just. But as we learn them, building blocks, we start as a buyer. Then what? Then we start to think about, well, this doesn't look great as a buyer. So then what? Well, then we would start thinking about a seller. And then we start to see, well, when when would I be thinking one versus the other? What are the potential? And it just sort of uh, uh, unlocks the door. Um, I mean, this is uh, this is Pandora's box, my friends. So welcome. Welcome in. It's going to be a good time. Uh, I'll be your guide. <laughs> uh, let's go. So what are we doing again? Analyze the stock. You should have a stop level. You need to know where are you wrong. If you don't know where you're wrong, how are you possibly defining your risk? How are you deciding how many shares to buy or what to trade? If you don't have some sense of when something is wrong and you would say, that's my line in the sand, I'm getting out. Okay, great. You get out there. How much are you going to lose? We have to control that. You'll see that here in a minute. So we, we want to start with a, where am I wrong? I need a target. What if I'm right? Or two. Wait, maybe we have a primary target where we're like, this is the big, the big win, but I gotta be careful because there's a an old resistance level here. And right, that might be a level where you say, I'm gonna take a third of the trade and I'm gonna take profit, tighten my stop, see if I can ride the rest. This is where you're really refining trade management skills. Trade management skills, you can see in my bullet point, it starts here in the in the due diligence. You're already kind of thinking, well, okay. If I did take this trade, what would I do with it? When would I, when would I take half? When would I take a third? When would I, right? That's what we need to know. We need to understand the price, the time, the volatility. So what do we expect to do if we're right? What are we unwilling to let it do if we're wrong? How long do we think it's going to take? And how are the options priced? From there, from there, we have to have a stop, a target, and a time frame. Now what? Now we can go use an options model. I'll show you. The one we're using, oh, I misspelled that, Bjergsen Stensland. I thought I changed that. Bjergsen Stensland via the Thinkorswim platform. So what is a pricing model? The original one is Black-Scholes. That's probably the one most of you have heard of. The Black-Scholes model won a Nobel Prize. Nobody uses it anymore. Why? Because it was it's outdated. It, it got improved and it became the binomial. And then what? Well, then that got improved. And now we have 
and, and I would expect at some point we'll see another one. They're not all that different, but the Bjergsen stem is the one, is the one we're going to use. That's going to help us to determine the strike price, the expiration date, and then and the size. I mean, at that point, look what you have at a starting point. You have a stop, you have a target, you might have a secondary target. Um, you have the strike price chosen, you have the expiration date chosen, and you have the number of contracts chosen in order to control the risk based on where you're going to stop out. Now what? Now you place the trade. That's it. That's it. You're done. That's a, there's a lot of work in those two first steps. So I know I kind of just like threw a bunch of things. I'm like, step one, do all of these things. Yeah. Could I break that into like nine different steps? Of course. This is the basic breakdown. Analyze the stock. That's part of our technical analysis. Analyze the options. Take what you've learned about the stock. Take your assumptions. Move to the model. Now you can start to figure some things out. If it looks good, you place the trade. When you've placed the trade, you're now in stage two, developing. Now the trade is developing. It might, right? Maybe it goes right. Maybe it goes wrong. You give it a few days. You're watching for signs that it is going right. So you can start tightening your stop. You're looking for signs that it's not working. So you can possibly cut your loss short. Those are your objectives in stage two. They're, they're different. If it moves into stage three, you'll have different objectives. And you'll look at it differently. That's where I'm saying, if you haven't watched stages of a trade, go back. The way we, the, our perspective and the actions we take very much are influenced by where we are in, in that trade contextually. I told you I get excited. I get a, gotta get a drink. Woo, let's keep going. Okay, now what? To the platform. Today's candidate, we're gonna look at Dell, okay? So let me pop out of here for just a second. Why Dell? Number one, Dell's on our watch lists. That's the best place to find something. A lot of trades, let me make sure I have drawing tools here. Uh, where are they? Any questions? Let me know. If you're having a great time, just be like, yeah, I'm having a great time, Scott. A lot of things have popped up. They're kind of up here. We're riding along in an overbought area. It's tough. We're, we would love to see some kind of a consolidation to give us another chance like this. We would like to see a consolidation, high or low. There's another window of trading. So most things right now we would characterize as strong but overbought. Right. I'm not there yet. Right. I just picked the first one. Now, though, what's the difference? What does Dell look like? What would we rather see? We said we would rather see. Whoops, that's not it. My big reveal just got ruined. Come on, think or swim. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Dell. Ah, what's Dell doing? Pulling back, right? That's what we are waiting for is the consolidation. We're saying, hey, the buyers, they've, they've really ran this thing up. And for this last... I would say like literally since here, this last little bit was like kind of just felt like it was on borrowed time. You're not trying to trade in late to this. Now you see it's pulling back our patience on something like this, paying off. What are we thinking? I'm thinking that any day starting tomorrow, this thing's ready to go. What is it right now? It is a bull flag Unfort that, that the bull flag. That's a great one. I'm going to add it to the content backlog. It's hard because we're going to be moving into options, but eventually I'm going to have some additional videos of of key concepts that just you wouldn't hit other other where uh, anywhere else. And price patterns is one of them. So when you think about things like head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, flags, pennants, wedges, um, that, that's great technical analysis. I definitely think you should want to incorporate that into what you're doing. If you ever want a book, here's from my personal reading list, one of my most favorites. This is from the Chartered Market Technicians Reading. This is the like a CFA, but for charts. It's called uh, Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets by John Murphy. Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets by, that's the Bible. It's just, it's just such a great resource. Candlesticks, patterns, 
oscillators. I mean, it just really does a comprehensive job of making sure that you're comfortable in your charts. Anyways, now what? This is a flag. Strong, here's the pole, strong bullish move. Now we have this, this kind of a, a small consolidation. Now, it could go for another day or two in the flag pattern. Eventually, we would stop thinking about it as a flag and just a, a normal consolidation, right? You might see something like this one back here, where it just took a while before it finally gave the signal, right? You finally, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for, though. And, and if you look back here, you'll see a very similar instance, what I mean. It might be two, three days only. There's the strength leading up to it, and then what? And then you got another one of those. So that's that's the thought process of a flag is are we going to get another another pull? So it can help us to establish projections, right? I'm about to even have to probably pull this down a little bit and, and make that a little bit tighter. Um, but it, it's going to help me to make a projection. Where do I think this has a chance to get to? I would also be thinking about time. However, time, look down here at the bottom. What do I have? 1130. That's my time. This trade now has a different constraint, right? So now my thought process might be, you know what? 80. I think it could get higher than 80, but I don't think I have time for it to get higher than 80. I think it could get to 80 in a, in a right? With 1130, that's... Uh, Two weeks from today, minus a holiday. So yeah, okay. I think there's definitely time for it to get to 80. Now what? Now I have a target. I don't have a confirmation yet, but I'm going to just work off of this candle, give it a little bit more room, right? So if I thought this was the bottom because it had started to go the other way, I would come a little bit below this level. The low here is 71.81. Maybe I go 1% below Maybe I'm down around 71.10. That's where I'm wrong. 1% below the low of the support level. Could it be a half a percent? Sure. Could it be 2%? Yes. Could it be one ATR, half an ATR? Uh, there's a lot of different ways. What are you defining? You're defining your line in the sand that says, this is support. This is where I believe the, the, the sellers failed and the buyers started coming back in. What we're doing is we're defining what would it look like then if the sellers came back in, how strong would they have to push for you to be like, oh, <clears throat> crap, that's enough. They broke They broke support. I'm out of here. Okay, so let's just kind of go, uh, we said we said 80. Um, I'm going to give it a little extra room. 80 is about seven and a half points. I'm at 72.50. That's about seven and a half points to the upside. Um, I said 70, 71. I'm going to give it even a little more room. I'm going to go 70.50. Down here, that's my stop level. Again, this is not a recommendation. Don't go trade this tomorrow and then be like, if it pulls back, right? Remember what we said? Still pulling back. We don't have any, we don't have any confirmation yet that the buyers are coming in. Just keep that in mind. Now what? I have a stop. I have a target. I have a time frame. I have everything I need. Everything I need to another big reveal. Here we go. Dell. Let's build the trade without building the trade. I am in thinkorswim. I am going to the simulated trades. Now, this is in a live account, so I could place the trade, right? I could place the trade. Um, but the... Uh, uh, but I couldn't... But not from here, right? This is this is this is not a paper account. This is a live account. But even in a live account, you have the ability to simulate the trade first. What what does that mean? It doesn't mean you're practice trading. It means you're actually creating it in an environment so you can say what what are my what ifs? Okay. So what have we decided now? Um, is one day going to be enough? We we already know our our price. If I'm right, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put that in eighty dollars. That's my target price. If you can't see, let me circle this so you can see it down here. $80. If I'm wrong, we said I'm wrong at $70.50. Those are now locked in. This is all part of the pricing model here. Okay? 
Um, sorry, let me see one thing. This looks just a little different. Um, something I need to see. Hmm. All right. Sorry about that. Now, the next step is to pick my expiration. What do I need to? I need at least to November 30th, right? Could I go just to December 1st? Yeah, I could, but I'm I'm like a day from expiration. Um, I usually want a week to 10 days more than I need. So if I need to December 1st, I need a week, which is at least December 8th to 10 days. If I'm that close, I'm going to pick the standard option. Standard option. What does that mean? It's this black one here. These are purple because they're non-standard. What's non-standard about them? They're weeklies. This option expires on the third Friday of the month. This is the first. Um, this is the first here. This is the second. Third is black. Fourth, fifth. You can see, right? Those are the those are the non-standard. What does the standard give me? It's going to give me more volume. Let me show you. If you look here, I'm only seeing 133, 250 contracts. If I come here, I'm seeing 100, 100, 330, 480, 920. And I've got a little bit tighter spreads. You can see my spreads are only 10 cents right here. 10 cents. This got to about 20 but I'm, I'm mostly in that range. So I've got pretty tight spreads. Is it phenomenal? Do I have thousands of contracts? No. Is it acceptable? Yes. This is barely, I'll tell you that right now. Barely. This is barely as much. I, I mean, if it was any less liquidity here at this option, I would probably be like, I'm a no. Why? Because it means there's just not enough competition with the market makers, right? Um, some people say no more than 10%. So they'd say, oh, with 330, you know, if you're only doing 10, I, I disagree. I want, I want to look at this. I want to look at the bid ask. I don't want to pay, you know, it, it may be 15 to 20 cents. I'd like it to be single digits. Quite honestly, that's the, that's the objective, right? Anything else is you're making a, a discretionary decision about it. So now what? Now what do I have? Uh, the last thing I need to do I need to look at the implied volatility. And if you notice, the implied volatility is actually quite high. Um, but what do I expect the implied volatility to do? I expect it to stay high. Why? Because I'm going to stay until earnings. Look, last time, it was high here. And what happened? It stayed high all the way until right there. When did it drop? Right after earnings. That's when we see the volatility crush. Right, that's when the vol that's when the the value sucks out of the options. We may only have time for a call today. I'm realizing so, um, but I'll go through the steps for a put. Uh, the uh, uh, maybe we'll hit that in the other in the next class. Here you can see the implied volatility side. What does that mean? It means the options are a little more expensive, but I don't expect them to lose value. So I'm actually okay with that. I expect it to to maintain. So I don't have to worry about Vega, which is. I know you're like, oh, great, Scott. This is not intro. Vega is, do I lose money if volatility drops? I don't think I'll lose money because I don't think volatility will drop. All I have to worry about is time decay. Okay, so now what? Now I've decided I'm willing to do an out-of-the-money option. And you can see that's actually where the most open interest is. It's here at this uh, 921 contract. So I'm going to click on this ask price. And what that's going to do, let me magnify this a little bit more. Um, what that's going to do 
is now um i don't know why they added that column we're going to be looking just over here we're going to look at this pl open column this is where i want you to focus right in here and at first glance you might think wait a second scott i'm risking 800 to make 4300 mm, yes and no yes it's there no why because that's today we said we're going to be in this trade all the way out potentially until the 30th. That's a very different story right there. All of a sudden, you're like, my when it was 800 to make 4,000, right? When it was 800 to make 4,000, um, that was uh that was great. Now what is it? Now it's 1500 to make 3500. I'm still getting 2 to 1. Do I like little better than 2 to 1? Do I like that? No. Why? Because the stock is giving 3 to 1. I'm actually losing money. This is one of the ways I evaluate an option. This is my stock reward to risk ratio over here. That says I'm risking 250 to make 750. That's three to one. This is my option reward to risk ratio. I'm risking 1500 to make 3500. That's 2.3 to one. I'm losing money. I'm losing potential to trade these options. What can I do about? It? Why is that happening? It's happening because look at this theta. I'm losing $75 a day. This is, this is where Steven's like, isn't it better to be a seller than a buyer? Uh, yeah. In, in a case like this, maybe the problem is, um, do you, do you learn that first? Um, and that's where I think we're still going to, we're going to, we're going to take an alternative route. Uh, instead of this, I'm going to practice. I'm going to show you something here. I am going. I would not take this trade. I don't like the way that this looks right now. I don't like that high implied. A lot of times the volatility ramps up over the last 10 days. When it's already ramped up, makes it a lot harder, right? What could I do? I could do a spread, but that's outside of the, that. that's next month. We'll talk about spreads. I could do a naked option where time is working for me instead of against me, right? So here, let me see if I can just show you real fast. Instead of, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell a put, and I want you to notice the. I have to go back to the beginning. You'll notice here I'm selling the put, and on the first day I'm getting two to one reward to risk ratio. And you might think Scott, you said two to one's not good enough. But you'll notice that every day it gets so that my reward is a little bigger and my risk is a little smaller. So as I advance this, you'll notice my reward has dropped down below 1,000. And now all of a sudden, by the time I get to the 29th, I'm making $2,600 and I'm only risking 470. I started out risking about 1,100. So this is about two and a half to one. It's a little better. I would still think there's something more I could do. Um, let's go and let's play with a in the money option. We're going to go to a $70 call. And now what is that going to do? That's hopefully going to slow the time decay a little bit. And you'll notice now, look, now I'm getting about two and a half to one. It's a little better. I'm getting uh, 5,200 over 21. That's a little better, but I'm not getting three to one on the money. Um, what does that say? That says I'm not going to do this trade. Um, if I were to do this trade, I don't have time to do another one. Um, if I were to do this, let's say that we said, you know what? It's good enough. Two and a half to one. It meets our rules. What's the next step? I would assume most of you are not going to risk $2,000 on this trade. So what would you have to do? You'd have to lower your position size. So if you look here, I am going to lower the position size. 
And as I do, you can watch that PL open change. Let's say I'm willing to risk $500. I can either risk 429 or 644. 429 is closer. So I would say that's what I'm going to do, risking 429 to make 1000. At that point, I can literally right click, confirm and send, and I can place this trade. Right? I can just jump right in and place this trade. Are most platforms like this? I would say no. Most platforms are going to have to analyze in one place. Then you're going to have to go to the option chain again and build the trade. But you can see at this point, what do we know? We know we're buying two contracts of Dell at this price. Now we're not, we're paying a thousand dollars. Nope, we're only uh, we're only at ten. We're only at two. We're only buying two contracts now. We uh, the if you notice, I unchecked that box, but I can easily just come come down here. That's not being looked at anymore but I can just pop it out of there. When you're in this simulated environment, pink and red means these are what ifs. If I had an actual trade on, it would be locked in. You, you, you would uh, only see that. So this is just the what if. So what I've done now is I've said, now I'm risking 429. That, that's now been position sized. I'm getting about uh, two and a half to one on my money, risking 429 to make a thousand. I expect to be in this trade up until the 29th. Um, and then I would confirm and send the trade. And once that trade is on, you would see, um, maybe I'll uh, use the paper account um, in the in the options so we can play with some trades. Uh, so, okay. We're going to go a little over tonight. That's on me. I get excited talking about options. And why can I not move this out? Okay. Okay, let me get my slides back up. Move these back over. Full candidate, Dell. Oh, let me delete my drawings. We don't need that. A put, it's exactly the same. It's literally exactly the same. Instead of, instead of an uptrending stock at a support level, you're looking for a downtrending stock at a resistance level. And instead of looking below for a break of support, you're looking above for a break of resistance. That's when you're wrong. Instead of looking up for a resistance level uh, for uh, uh, a target, you're looking down for a support level for a target. Everything else is exactly the same. It's really the same. It's not that. It's it's exactly. Then you go into the model. Instead of going to the left for calls, you go to the put, uh, to the right for puts. And you say, what if I buy this put? And you look at your stop and you look at your target and you look at your reward to risk ratio. We will do more of this. I'll have a I'll have more of a step-by-step -step guide. Um, it might seem like a lot at first. All you need is to find the model with your broker and watch a few tutorial videos. It's worth it, I promise you. It's worth it. Trade stock until you're comfortable trading options or trade options one contract at a time live while you paper trade for real. Whatever you need to do to give yourself the ability to learn it without putting too much pressure on yourself. Then what? Then. Then, oh, where's my slides? Uh, I was going to look at XLE. You can go practice with XLE. Go, pay some, go do a paper trade with XLE. Uh, energy uh, oils dropping, right? Uh, that might be a, a good place to practice. When you're managing an options trade, what do you want to do? Set clear objectives. You saw what I did. Clearly defined. People are like, oh, I bought a call because I thought it was going up. You did? You thought it was going up? Amazing. How high? Over what period of time? Right? Like, let's be specific with our objectives. Targets, level of risk, time horizon for holding the option. Regularly monitor. <laughs> There's no set it and forget it. Um, we monitor daily, at least. Um, we, we reward to risk changes daily, expectations, everything about it. Make sure you're ready to, to uh, adapt without a doubt. Adjustments and hedging. Be prepared to make adjustments. Sell half, sell a third, tighten stops. Um, set different orders. We're going to talk about that in one second. Time management. I said, I give it seven to 10 days if I'm right, only three to four days if I'm wrong. Time decay. It's hurting you if you're a buyer. If you're a seller, you love time. The longer it takes, the better. Um, that's where we need our building block. Start as a buyer, then you move to a seller. 
uh, avoid emotional decision making. The, the more that is planned, the less likely it is that you make an emotional decision. Stick to the plan to avoid making decisions based on fear or greed. What kind of orders do we use? Market orders still, right? We've gone through these market orders, next available price. Limit orders, better. Specify a limit. Always try to work it if you can. Working in the middle of the bid and the ask price. If things are moving quickly, though, if you find yourself chasing, get out of that loop. It can be oh so frustrating. I'm sure some of you have done it before. And every time you cancel in a place, you missed it again and missed it again. And you're just like chasing that thing. If you see it happening, jump out of that loop and get in front of it. Stop losses um, are very important, but don't let stop losses fill on opens. If you're going to get triggered on a stop on the open, cancel, wait for the first 15 or 20. See if you still need it. Put it back on. Conditional or contingency orders. I love these. If the stock does this, get me out. Usually it's based on a price threshold. Trailing stops can be useful at the end of a trade, right? Trail stops and OCO, one cancels the other. If it hits my stop, cancel my target. If it hits my target, cancel my stop. Makes sense. Next steps, more education. Um, learn about calls and puts, options, strike prices, expiration dates, online courses like, the, like ours. Um, what else? The OCC, Options Clearing Corp, has free education. Go there. The CBO, Chicago Board of Options, has free education. Go there. There's excellent free resources online. Books, definitely. Um, our, we're going to dive into options together. So if you want to just wait and let's do it, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Practice with paper trading, please, please, please. And if, like I said, if you're going to do it live, start with a contract. One contract, one out of the money contract. So if everything goes wrong, you're like, okay, that sucked. I'm glad I did one. Build confidence, learn the platform, learn the strategies, learn how to analyze. Um, start with simple strategies. Remember, we are buying small contract calls and puts. As you gain confidence, you can explore bigger and more complex option strategies where we start to get into spreads and things like that. Woo! Questions and answers. You have questions. Hopefully I have answers. Um, if you missed the first, this this might have been a lot. Like you might have felt like the fire hose was on and it was hard to get a drink. Um, the, uh, uh, the first day would be helpful for you to establish some vocabulary and, and some basic understandings about contracts and buyers and sellers and rights and obligations and strikes and expirations and all that all that good stuff we didn't we we sort of flirted a little around the greeks we will talk about option greeks delta theta vega um in, in the options we'll talk about spreads and selling options um when we get to the foundations course we'll have eight weeks we scratch the surface we'll build a little bit on here very fast i know bob oh there's always so much to cover i could go literally for hours um hopefully hopefully the foundations class just gives us a little bit more ability to space it out um but watch this again um if if i can at least have two or three of these different build a trade scenarios we can start to to do this so i, I want to be able to do it fast when we do it in the group so i need to have a few different recorded resources that i can share with people so that when I'm like, here's what we're doing, stop target time frame. Here's what we're doing. Slice here, slice here, time frame here. We're picking this. Because no matter what trade I built, naked put, covered call, spread, I'm going to set it up in there and I'm going to look at it so I can see when what does it need to do? What do I not want it to do? What, what's hurting me? What's helping me? Right? There's a, there's a lot of elements that it really is important to understand. Were there any questions that you didn't know or let us know along the way. Um, uh, Bob, oh, options play. Where's that? Bob, is that a different platform? Um, Perry, uh, uh, Stephen wanted me to let you know. He sent you a, a direct message in Discord. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, Bob, uh, oh, it's a website. Okay, so yeah, there are, there are websites that have option pricing models. You need to have it, though. You need to have an ability where you are forecasting that that trade that I showed you, it was accounting for 
every day losing a little bit more. Oh, it's 500 a year. Oh, shoot. Think or swim is free if you trade through Schwab. <laughs> um, yeah, you just got to learn the platform. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube to help with Think or Swim. It's it's a it's a cult favorite among us options people. So um, yes, yeah. Um, anything else? Any questions? I hope I I kind of showed you what the potential is. Eyes are wide open though, right? Like when people are like, oh, I lost everything on an option. You're like, what do you mean? Like, I can tell you exactly how much I'll lose, where I'll lose it, how long it'll take. I mean, it's, uh, we get to dictate. We choose. We have the right tools available to us. We can do that. Um, so awesome. It's great to see everybody. Tomorrow we will be doing our market wrap. Remember, it is not a morning session. It is an afternoon. We'll be together the last 45 and we'll wrap up the session. But if you're on discord join us or join at 9 30 um i might catch the last 15 minutes but probably not much more than that um but from 9 30 to 10 30 we're gonna have a market watch group discord session where hey pop on chat what are you trading what are you looking at are you are you staying in are you getting in are you selling half or what are you thinking you're gonna do what are you right whatever let's let's get some uh Let's get some trader engagement, uh, right? A lot of people pay for services specifically for that. Um, this is for education, but we have the ability to have an, an incredible community feature. Let's work together to see if we can't make that happen. Thanks, everybody. It's good to see you. Discord, 9.30 to 10, 10.30, whatever, um, somewhere in there. Um, I'm, I'm working on some additional solutions that will help to, uh, to integrate that and 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 provide support um so i'll hope uh, hopefully have news on that soon everybody have a wonderful rest of your night see you tomorrow as always happy trading